Maggie and I really believe in the power of prep um, for racing. And we have a really big list of things we like to do before a day of racing and a, a little bit smaller of a list of things to do between races. But um, having a routine really helps you stay on task and helps it helps with nerves. Um, it helps make sure you don't miss anything, especially on you know, as the conditions change or the day goes on and you're starting to kind of mentally wear down a bit. So we really believe in the power of prep and we hope that with this presentation, we'll, we'll help you guys believe in it too. It's funny because I think this is like Steph's favorite part of the day. Like if we could launch three hours before start time and just go through the pre-start routine over and over and over again, I think she would. So we have about 75% of people say yes, they have a pre-start routine. Right. So that's, that's awesome. And, uh, you know, I hope that we can teach you guys something about what we do, or you can share with us something that you do that's a little bit different. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, having your own routine, um, some people like to print them out, put them in their life jacket. I know for a while we did that, um, and it just kind of helps you check things off the list. And it, it depends on what kind of sailor you, you are. If you're more laid back, like want to just feel things out, then a routine probably isn't for you. But for us, we really believe in this power of prep. Um, so there's a lot of things to do in order to feel ready. Um, this is kind of our list of things that we like to do from when we leave the beach to basically when the first warning signal goes up or the orange flag goes up at 10 minutes. Um, we'll immediately get out to the race course um, and get into some upwind tuning. We'll get the rig and sails dialed in for the different conditions um, with Julia and then she'll kind of split off and go check the current while we focus on um, doing some more tuning, some, bo some boat speed stuff. Um, if it's a steady day, we'll um, split with our, with our tuning partner. If it's a shifty puffy day, we'll focus on transitions and, um, and some boat handling as well. Um, we'll, get, we'll get our compass numbers on each board. We'll maybe sometimes write them down, um, upwind and downwind, uh, pre or boat handling, you can check the bias of the gate if that's set, um, and you can do a lot of practice accelerations. Um, one of my favorite things to do is to do accelerations between the gate marks if they're already set. So you can um, really practice using a line, and then you can check the bias at the same time. Killing two birds with one stone. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> so accelerations are, we really, really practice those a lot. Like we try to get five or so accelerations before every race. Um, because they're such a critical part of, of the race. Um, we get a lot of head to winds. Um, we check the angle off the line. Sometimes we'll just um, come around the committee boat end. We'll come up on starboard close haul, check the angle, look under the boom. Okay, this looks like our, in a lifted angle. This confirms boat bias. Um, and you can kind of just circle around, keep, keep doing laps of the race committee boat. Um, you can also just spend time getting a feel for the line, like we said earlier, sail down the line on starboard and just get a feel for what it feels like to be there. Cause it is, it's an invisible line. It feels weird. Um, and then you can practice using your line sight. Uh, you know, if you can get it at the line set early enough, get your line sight and then practice kind of creeping in using that line sight, um, counting down the time. Um, another big one, make sure the kite has no water in it and it was a clean takedown um, and check for weeds. So, that's what we like. That's just a short list of things that we like to do. <laughs> just a couple <laughs> things to do. Yeah. Um, but I would actually like to emphasize that like a few things are absolutely non-negotiable, right? Like a few things we, if, if the starting gun goes off and we haven't done a couple accelerations, we'll do them. Um, because how many times of practice do you practice, or how many times of practice do you practice accelerations? And how many times has your first acceleration been your best of the day? Like, I'll answer that question, zero for me. Like my first acceleration is never ever the best. It's never usually even good, you know? I need to think about how much weight am I helping like rock and pump the boat? How much sheet, like where was the jib sheet going to? Um, how much weight are we applying out? You know, all of these things, like you don't wanna figure all those things out first race of the day. You know, you want to just do a few runs. And so that's like an absolutely essential one. If we're, if we're running a long time, we'll do a few of those after we get to time and then it's like, Okay, a couple practices. Um, and I also wanted to note, like, yeah, this seems like a pretty um, tedious, like, checklist of things. But when you do three or four or five races over the course of the day, like, mental fatigue is the real thing. Um, and it's, it's usually the last race of the day when everyone's, like, hungry and tired. And that's when you miss that the, there's been a 10-degree left shift or something. 
and had had we done those compass line you know compass checks like we would have picked up on that um and so yeah these things really help us uh, stay sharp and like help us catch the little things that nine times out of ten you would but then it's that tenth time you're tired and, and maybe you wouldn't like we talked about earlier we like to have this routine of things that we like to do from the moment we leave the beach until the orange flags go up or the five minute flags go up however your sequence works um, and this is kind of our routine of um, a way that we like to approach racing um, so five minutes we like to be at the race committee boat where it's really easy to get the time because you're right next to the person doing the countdown um, you can check the course and the compass heading then you can bear away or sorry, then you can go ahead to win, kind of back up, check your transit, go forward and back and forward and back. Sometimes that's a little bit traffic dependent. Um, and then we like to make our final rig call um, because we have to have that dialed in before four minutes. Um, and then at four minutes, um, we check which prep flag went up. We check the angle of the line. So we'll kind of just hang out near the starboard end. We'll bear away, um, send it down the line towards the middle. We'll check the angle of the line there and then we'll go ahead to wind again. Um, from there, um, around three minutes, we'll just spend time hanging out above the line, looking up when, discussing the game plan, reminder of the priorities, um, those things that we discussed last week. Um, and then at two minutes, um, we'll do our final game plan call and we'll split to a side. So I, we like being in the middle because if you say, okay, we really like the right, you can split off to the boat end pretty easily. If you like the left, you can split off to the pin end pretty easily. And that timing of that game plan might happen a little bit sooner. Let's say it's light air. We'd probably err on the side of being in our spot around three minutes or four minutes. So we need to know the game plan sooner. But if it's a really puffy, shifty day, we're not going to make that final game plan call until two minutes. Um, and then one minute, we kind of started making our final approach to the line. Um, we start dialing into the boats around us, um, our distance to the line, and then and our setup on the boats around us. Um, and we kind of have this time as like a, a final bailout time. Um, so one minute comes around and we're not liking the spot that we're in for whatever reason, um, we'll say, okay, it's, it's time to start looking for a bailout um, because that's the amount of time we believe it takes to do a, a circle and get back to finding a good hole on the line. Um, at 30 seconds, our attention kind of goes to where is our bow um, in relation to other boats? Are we, are we, bow out on boats? Are we bow behind on boats? Um, and how is our gap to lure? Do we have a good gap to lure or um, are we going to be struggling with that gap? Um, and then 20 seconds, focusing on the pressure for the start. Um, so Maggie's kind of looking towards both sides of the line and I'm kind of looking forward. So I'm, I make a call on what pressure we're going to have. And then that affects our acceleration. If it's a really steady day, probably don't need to make a call. But if it's a really puffy, shifty day, then we'll make a call like pressure's up for this acceleration or, you know, we're going to have a really light acceleration here. Um, and then Maggie goes controls on around 20 seconds. Um, and then we really start managing the flow um, based on our time and distance and when where our bow is to other boats. So if we're really early, we're starting to have a little bit less, we want a little bit less flow forward. If we're, if we're late, we're starting to really pick up the pace and, and pick up the flow in the boat. Um, and then that's also kind of our, earmark time for a final double tack. So something that's fun about our, our fleet is we do a lot of double tacking to position ourselves um, really strong on the boats around us. So um, 20 seconds is kind of like the final time that you can really make that, that double tack up to the windward boat. Um, and that all somehow happens in five seconds according to my list. Um, but at 15 seconds, we start talking about our, our acceleration time. And that's Maggie really leads the charge on that based on um, the, the distance that she's seeing, um, but I'll also chime in based on the amount of flow that we have. If we don't have a lot of flow, but we have um, a lot of time to the line, like then we really need to, that acceleration time needs to happen sooner. Um, and then we, from there, we just, we get into our preload phase, which is just kind of tensioning, putting tension on the leeches of the sails and just starting to get the sails drawing some more. Um, and then we execute the acceleration. So kind of just breaking it up on how we think about different parts of the start and um, you know just in 10 seconds a lot can change so I think it's it's kind of fun to write this out and what your focus is is based on what your job is on the boat and I think if there were if we had like a graphic overlaid on this this flow chart of all the times you'd see that like we go from big picture we're looking at the race course from like five minutes to three minutes you're still in the like gathering information phase 
thinking about your game plan, what you're going to do, what's changing, what's happening. And then really after like a minute, our focus is totally on the boats around us. Like we're not necessarily locked in, but at that point in terms of like, we couldn't bail if things were bad. Um, but the focus is really on boat positioning, you know, so it shifts from like up the course to like just the boats around us because that's who we're racing at that time. And not a whole lot matters. Um, what Steph was talking about, the pressure for the start, like that's usually velocity or if there's a big angle change and that is, um, that affects our acceleration time. But she wasn't talking about that in terms of like changing our game plan necessarily. Um, because yeah, full focus just on that positioning uh, from that point on. And Steph, I think we also had a lot of success like in the last year and a half, we, we focused a lot on our starting. Um, and when we broke everything down into a really clear division of labor, you know, um, I do the, st the timers uh, or the timing. And so like how I say the time every time has to be consistent and should be consistent. Um, in terms of like time and distance, that's like on my plate, uh, game plan is steps and on the puppy shifty crazy days, like I'll have, um, additional like timing check-ins where I'll ask like, prompting questions to like check in with stuff like still the same game plan do you still like the right are you still thinking we're going right um and so that's the only other thing i i would add to this list which is very comprehensive <laughs>